What's up guys? So as I was getting some work done earlier this day, today's Friday, so I was just finishing out my work for this week. Uh, I've had a lot of things going on this week, but I was just finishing out the last bit of work that I have before I go out of town. And so I was making some lunch and I'm looking at what time it is and I'm like, oh crap, like I have to leave here in like less than an hour now and I still haven't packed up yet. Like I don't have my things ready yet. Like I got all this mess going on back here because I have everything laid out and I wanted to make a video for this week. And I thought to myself, oh man, like I actually verbalized it. Ah, I don't think I have enough time. I can't do it. But then I caught myself and I said it because if you know me, you know that I really, like I truly care about making these videos, I really care about bringing value and having these conversations with you guys. You know that if I, I'm always making time and having conversations with you guys through messages or video calls and whatnot. And so I caught myself this because, you know, I believe that we make time for the things we truly care about and that we truly value and I truly value making these videos and I believe that you know when people say oh I don't have enough time it's just an excuse right like I believe people would say oh I don't have enough time to go to the gym or cook food or be or eat healthy and it's not that they don't have enough time it's just that the problem is that they're not valuing that enough they don't understand the value in that so therefore they don't create the time for it and so I caught myself and I realized, well, when am I gonna say that again? When am I gonna say, oh, I don't have enough time or I'm tired or I use excuses not to really do the things, especially the things that I care about and that I really value, All right? Like when am I gonna tell you guys, oh, sorry, I don't have enough time to talk to you guys. Or when am I gonna say, oh, I don't have enough time for my patients. You know, I don't have enough time to help you out with that right now. Or I don't have enough time to help my team out or just, you know what I mean? I don't have enough time to have that conversation with somebody. So I caught myself and we're here because the truth is I do have the time. So we're here. Anyways, so I had my meal. It was great. Same with the pasta. Mwah, delicious. And uh, oh, I also, I got this in. Uh, cue the video. And something, I'll, uh, I'll try to beat your record. <laughs> or dad. Give whoever a trophy in heaven. And hey, if it's still you, then we'll, <laughs> you'll still have the reins. But no, uh, no coming down here and killing us off early, cause that's that, that's not fun. She did, yeah. She lived a great 85 years, huh? Yeah. Whenever you come, whenever you visit in August, it would be right. That's that's where everyone's at. Upstate New York area. I like whenever we went there last time. It was it was beautiful there. I, I was up there for uh, for the funeral. And this is Gonstead the Adjuster. It is a history book of. A lot about the history of chiropractic, the history of Dr. Gonstead himself, there he is, and the history of the Gonstead Technique. It's actually a really interesting book. I was had the chance to look through it some and read the first couple of chapters. It's just quality, a lot of pages, a lot of good stuff in here. So the cool thing about this book too is that 100% of the proceeds go to the Gonstead Clinical Societies, which is like the research fund. So. 100% of the funds that it costs to get this book are going back into Gonstead Research, which is amazing because if you know me, you know that I love research and there's not enough research out there in chiropractic, let alone for Gonstead. So it's really cool that I got to get this special book and also um, contribute to the research fund. So on that note, because in light of getting the Gonstead, this Gonstead history book, uh, I want to answer some questions that I got about Gonstead itself. So let's go ahead and get into it. So, Remzi, am I pronouncing that right? Remzi, Rumzi, Remzi said, great video and insight, thank you. So she was recently told that the Gonstead system is only successfully practiced by big, strong men. And obviously this was that very disappointing for her to hear because she's interested in wanting to learn the Gonstead system. So what's my opinion on this? Well, you know, I already responded to her question and whenever I responded, I just kind of typed it up needlessly and whatnot. But as I thought more about it, it really kind of angered me and upset me that this is getting said. And so I want to answer it here on this video as well, because, you know, this isn't something that gets talked about necessarily um, by pre chiropractic students, but it's a rebuttal that we often hear here on campus, right, with other chiropractic students, right? They hear that all oh, Gansa can only be, a, you know, taught in, you know, the people who can use Gonstead method are only the big strong men. And the reason why they say that is because, well, Dr. Gonstead was a larger male. Uh, although he's only 5'11", I'm 5'10", so I guess it's like an above average height for a male. But nonetheless, he had larger hands, which I guess helped him adjust better. There's all sorts of stories out there, but the truth of the matter is, it, it couldn't be further from the truth. And the fact of the matter is, is that some of the best adjusters 
that I've ever met are Gonstead women, women who are Gonstead doctors, right? The seminars that I go to, there's two women docs there and they are incredible. Like they are some badass chiropractors. I mean, I tell you, they can rock my spine. They can rock anyone's spine. I've seen them. I've physically witnessed them adjust over 250 plus pound men, right? Like with ease, like it's certainly possible. And it just angers me because it's just the furthest thing from the truth. And it angers me that you heard this Ramsey and it hurts me that this is something that gets frequently talked about and stirred around with this Gonstead technique because it's just not true. Like it doesn't matter what size you are. It doesn't matter what gender you are. And it just, it, it honestly, it honestly upsets me because it's just not true. Um, you know, I'm a big Tom Brady fan, and this just made me think of this just off the spot because if you look at his combine footage, even if you look at him now, like he's not the most athletic looking guy, but look at his combine footage. Like the most unathletic, like if you showed me that photo, I would've been like, yeah, that's a, that's a dad bod, uh, <laughs> new balance, going to your kid's softball practice kind of, kind of type, right? But yet, people said he couldn't do it, but he had this. And I don't know exactly where I was going with that, but he didn't have the physical accolades, but he had this. He had the mindset and the intention, and he knew he was gonna be successful regardless what anyone said about him, right? I say the same thing with like Baker Mayfield. I like watching him too. He's a short little guy. He's like, what, like 5'10 quarterback in the NFL? People always say, oh, you can't be a tall, you know, you have to be like 6'2", 6'3", 6'4", to be a quarterback in the NFL. If you're below 6'2", like you're not gonna make it, and yet look at him now, like he's starting quarterback for the Cleveland Browns. Something tells me he's gonna have a long and very successful career. Like, there's just, it, it upsets me that this is even being said because it's just not true. Like, there are so many successful, go like, uh, women practitioners out there. So I hope that I can be an inspiration for you to tell you that no, it is certainly possible. And do not let anyone tell you that you can't do something. Now, if you're trying to, you know, if your goal is like, you know what, I want to go float on top of the crowds and, I, you know, I want to go, uh, I want to learn how to fly, like, that's obviously not practical, right? I mean, you can try, but you're probably going to kill yourself. Like, I should probably tell you, hey, you know what? Like, you really should reconsider this whole trying to fly thing. I don't think you can do it. But something where it's clearly, like, achievable because there are so many successful Gonstead women out there, like, it's just, I don't know where that, where these people are coming from, but it's just not true. Uh, and they're telling you you can't do something, like, you gotta understand that it's just not true. And you gotta go for it. And so don't let anyone tell you that you can't do something. If anything, use it as a chip on your shoulder to say, you know what? I'm gonna go be a Gansa doctor. I'm gonna go be a great Gansa doctor. And what you should do, Ramsey, is Whenever you are a successful Gonstead doctor, successfully being practicing the Gonstead system, you can hit up that doc and be like, hey, remember when you told me that Gonstead can't be done by women? <laughs> that, yeah, that was, that was funny, wasn't it? Yeah. So anywho, it gives me a chip on my shoulder just hearing that. So let's move on to the next question. So Michael asked, uh, why and how early did you decide Gonstead was the way that I wanted to go with things? Uh, so I answered this question too, but in short, you know, I decided that I was going to learn Gonstead uh, pretty early on. Uh, my reason for why I got into the Gonstead in the first place was because, you know, I wanted to learn from other doctors that I was inspired by. And whenever I was wanting to become a chiropractor, the people or the doctors that were a huge inspiration for me, other than my doctors back home, were guys on the internet because I was looking up chiropractic stuff on YouTube realize, oh, there's nothing about chiropractic school, hmm, trying to fix that. Uh, but there were some videos from other chiropractors on there, and so I saw work from Dr. Ian, uh, the Australian Gonsa doctor. I saw Dr. Rahim, and I looked at them, and I was like, whoa, like, if I can be that, or if I can be anywhere close or near to that, like, that's what I want to do. Like, it inspired me and motivated me, and they still inspire me and motivate me, motiv motiv motivate me today. Uh, to want to model and do what they're doing because they're getting such incredible results and I'm so inspired by that. And so I came into school with the intention that, you know what, I'm gonna learn this Gonstead thing, but I necessarily didn't really understand the technique though. I just knew that they were Gonstead doctors and really liked what they did, but I didn't necessarily understand the technique. And so as I started coming to the club and getting involved, you know, if you know me, you know I like to get like really in depth with things, right, and I have the kind of analytical mindset, um, but I began to realize that this system can be utilized, like there's nothing that this system can't do. Like you can see anyone with this system. And so to me, I don't necessarily have 
the exact clarity with the type of people or the exact kind of practice that I want for myself, right? But I know with the Gonset system, I can do anything that I want to do. I can see pediatrics, I can see kids, I can see athletes, I can see adults, I can see geriatrics. Like I can see people with one leg, with no legs. Like it doesn't, you can see and do everything within the system and that really excited me. And then beyond that, I just loved the specificity and the thought process behind the system and why we adjust what we adjust, not necessarily just feeling for what feels tight or what hurts, but really understanding the biomechanics of the spine and looking deeper to find the root cause of the problem and then making the least corrections possible to make the biggest results for each individual patient. And so I loved it and just learning about the information and the resources uh, available and the opportunities available within this system to really learn and go really, really deep just to learn all that it takes to become an amazing chiropractor, an amazing doctor. And to me, the decision was pretty obvious that I was going to stick with this system. Um, where I know with other techniques, it's not that I have anything against any other techniques, but I know with some other techniques, there's limitations to it, right? Like you might have to implement a little bit of this technique, a little bit from that technique. And I think the problem with that is because each technique is a little bit different with their decision, like in their decision making how they approach each case that sometimes you can get mixed up with that. And I don't think you're really concreted in one singularity idea. And so that's why I love the Gonset system because the analysis is so thorough. There's just so much experience and knowledge and understanding for what we do and why we do it. Um, and so it really resonated with me. Uh, so I don't necessarily think Gonset is for everyone, to be honest. Like I don't, if you don't have the mindset for it and you're not thinking forward thinking like that with an analytical mindset for really thinking through and understanding the problem and wanting to understand the biomechanics of the spine and really taking the work and the effort that it takes to actually figure out the root cause of what's coming in for one patient. Because the truth of the matter is, guys, like there's not just a cookie cutter way to treat somebody. Like every single spine is gonna be different. Every single patient you see is gonna have an individual case and you're gonna kinda of be a detective to figure that out. So that's why the Gonsa system is most resonated with me and that's why for me, I wanna go all in and just get that depth within this one technique that I can, just so that I can have that knowledge base and that confidence in myself that when a person walks in my door, no matter how difficult the case, that I believe that I know how best to treat that person and to get them better as soon as possible and as well as possible because that's my goal and that's the kind of doctor that I want to become. So whoops, the battery died, but I think it ended on a good note there. Uh, so I have like literally 20 minutes before I gotta get going, so I'm gonna go and pack real quick. But hey, I made the time and we still have the time. We're still good. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you got something out of it, make sure you give it a like. Uh, and subscribe if you haven't. If you are watching my videos and you aren't subscribed yet, subscribe. What are you doing? What are you waiting for? And as always, guys, know that I want to take the time to always help you guys and reach out to you guys. So if you have any questions or you just want to talk, always don't hesitate. You can always feel free to reach out to me. You can comment on these videos, reach out to me on social media, or just send me an email. I look forward to speaking with you guys, and I'll see you on the next one.